Hello and welcome to the Glidecam tutorial. In this video you will see how to set up a camera onto a Glidecam. In this instance I'm using a Canon 60 Mark I but you can obviously use any camera that you like that can shoot video. I recommend the 60 Mark II by the way as well because um, that's got good autofocus and that's always useful when you're doing sort of moving steady cam or glide cam sort of shots. Okay, so when you set the camera up you want to just make sure that the lens cap is off, the lens hood is on and you've taken the strap off so that doesn't get in the way and hinder your movements. I'm also here selecting my focal length and I will load up my SD card as well. So whatever media you're using with whichever camera you're using just make sure you've inserted that. Okay, so in the Glidecam kit, you'll see a number of different items that you want to make sure are present and correct before you leave the IOP. It's always good practice to do that. So there's the Glidecam itself, the gimbal. And then following from that, there's the plate which goes on top. It's just kind of like a standard tripod plate. And then what we have here is the post which joins the gimbal to the sledge at the bottom which counterweights the camera okay, and then a bag of weights two are already loaded on one side of the sledge and another two on the other side four in total um, and from experience this is the kind of like optimal sort of weight that you want to use to counterbalance a 60 mark one or mark two with a similar lens that um, i'm using in the video okay so i'm just counting eight weights there just to sort of highlight the fact that there's eight plus four and here i'm just emphasizing again there's two weights on one side and two weights on another side to counterbalance the weight of the camera that I'm using at the moment. Okay, so next thing that I'm going to do with the sledge is just unlock those knobs there and then just spread the wings out as far as they'll go and then lock them in place. Okay, so what I'll do next is I'm going to put the post onto the sledge which then joins onto the gimbal what you want to just make sure is that you obviously find the thread end and screw that onto the sledge. There's only one then that's got that, so that's pretty obvious. And then set the gimbal on top, which is a bit like a kind of like a, a bike seat on a bike. Okay, so here I'm just indicating which is the front and back basically. So on the front, there isn't like a, a kind of a screw in the middle, whereas on the back there is. I'll kind of explain what the screws are for later on. Here I'm also lining up the sledge to make sure that it's basically parallel to the plate on the top. Okay, so you can see me doing that in the video. And I'm just locking that in place. So next thing I'm going to do is just put the um, plate onto the bottom of the camera. Okay, so in this instance it's just important to make sure that you've got the plate on the right way. I'm actually putting it on the wrong way at the moment and you'll see me swizzle it around. Sometimes if you put the plate on the wrong way and then try and put it on the tripod, or gimbal and um, it can sometimes get stuck so you don't want to do that so I've just turned that around and now I'm locking that in place just making sure the plates nice and square to the camera okay so I'm just gonna sort of like move the gimbal in place and what you'll see is I'm gonna just slide the camera plate from the front to the back okay and I'm going to depress the gold kind of a locking mechanism so that it can slide into place and then there's a little sort of switch on the other side just to lock it in place okay so once the camera is locked into place and um, the next part of the process is called the drop test so we hold the sort of gimbal horizontally like so and then we drop it and what we want is the drop test to last roughly about two seconds. So here you can see that it's way too fast. And what we're going to do is basically shorten the length of the post so that it will basically take longer to drop. So I've kind of like gone to the extreme here and really shortened it. And so the idea now is that it's counterbalanced so that the sledge is top. So obviously we don't want that. We want the camera sitting on the top. So I'm gradually edging it upwards to get to that point where we can do the drop test and it will take about two seconds. So here it's still kind of like top heavy. So I'm going to continue going up like so. You'll find that sometimes 
you may need to sort of like balance the camera on top before you do the drop test. Um, what I'm doing is I'm doing the drop test first because the camera was kind of sitting okay before I started doing the drop test. But it's kind of sometimes a bit of toing and froing. So one one thousand, two one thousand. So that's pretty close. One one thousand, two one thousand. Okay, so I'm going to address the sort of balancing issues of the camera now. So what I'm doing now is underneath the gimbal plate sort of area, I'm unscrewing some screws. There's ones that you can see at the moment are basically locking the forwards and backwards motion. And then the side ones are to do with the left and right. Okay, so it's all to do with sort of like the roll and tilt axis if you like. Okay, so I've loosened all of them so that I can then sort of shunt them either backwards and forwards or left and right, depending on which way the camera's leaning. Okay, so I'm just emphasising unscrew all those screws on the bottom and top. There's four underneath and sort of three on the sides. The ones on right on the corners you don't want to have to worry about. Okay, so at the moment what I'm doing is I'm just looking at which way it's leaning. So it's leaning forwards and to my right. Okay, so to counter that we just go the opposite direction of the way that the camera's leaning. So I'm going to address the roll axis first, and I'm going to basically shunt the camera to my left. Okay, and you can see that I'm indicating via my miming skills that if I turn it anti-clockwise, I'm going to shunt it to the left, which is what I'm doing. It's that little tiny middle screw, which is slightly different looking to the other knobs. Okay, so I'm going to have to sort of do that a bit more, making sure that my focal length hasn't changed. Sometimes if it sort of leans forwards, they've sort of zoomed. Uh, part of the lens can sort of pop out. Okay, so it's not too bad. Now it's just leaning forwards a bit more. So if you've got like big kind of like sort of bias towards going backwards or forwards, then you can move the plate backwards and forwards a bit just to address that balance. And then use a screw on the back in the middle, which I'm indicating now, to sort of shunt it backwards and forwards to make sort of finer adjustments. Okay, you'll find that when you start doing this, you'll probably either do it too much or too little. So it's just a kind of matter of doing it over and over and then you'll find the sort of sweet spot. So again, the knob that I'm turning is left for going backwards anti-clockwise and clockwise for going right. Okay, so I can see now I'm holding it that it's still kind of leaning to the right a bit on my right. So I'm just shunting it to the left a little bit more and I'm adjusting the back, I think, to make it go forwards a little bit because it's kind of a bit back heavy. Okay, and then once you feel that you've done that balancing, then sometimes it's well, it's obviously always good to worth doing the sort of drop test just again, just to make sure that that's kind of adhering to the sort of general two second rule. So hopefully, well, I believe that I'm going to be doing that now. One one thousand, two one thousand. One one thousand, two one thousand. So that's pretty good. In some videos that I've seen, they kind of go anywhere from two to three seconds. But I found that two seconds is kind of like a kind of good sweet spot. Okay, so I'm just rechecking that my camera is still balanced on the gimbal, both from the sides and the back. So it's not leaning forward or backwards or left and right, which is not doing. And now you can kind of do this little test where you go up and down, left and right, and it should still sit level due to the gimbal device. Okay, which is doing there. Okay, obviously when you're using the gimbal, you want to use your strongest arm to sort of like take the weight. So that's the balancing and the drop test, basically how to set up the glide cam. Thank you for your attention.